Hey guys, it's Paige or Duchess Celestia, and today I'm going to be talking about selling your art at conventions and some tips that I've learned over the years that really help with it. By no means am I an expert, and these are really just my own opinions on what I've done. Uh, as was voted for over on my Twitter, this video will be followed by two others. What not to do as a convention artist, and what not to do as an Artist Alley customer. So please keep an eye out for those if you're interested. But before I start unloading this giant ass list onto you, let's quickly go over what I'm drawing. Today's piece is actually an apparel design I had sketched out a really long time ago, which will be available for sale on t-shirts and sweaters over on my store. I'll, I'll put a card up there for you guys, so go ahead and click that if you're interested, uh, as well as a link in the description. The design was originally going to have more of a pastel vaporwave vibe to it, but as you can see in the beginning, but I wasn't vibing with it, so I changed it to a brighter, more vibrant palette. You also get to see me messing around with new brushes, which I didn't think would show up so clearly on the timelapse. And yes, this is still done using the time-lapse feature because I actually started it quite a while before I planned to switch, so bear with me again, please, I'm sorry. Alright, so, I've been selling at conventions since 2015, starting when I was 17, and honestly, it's really wild to look back at how much has changed since then. I've learned a lot over the years and made a plethora of mistakes, and today I'm hoping to share what I've learned with anyone who's considering getting into the convention art life. Uh, one thing to note though is that my experience with convention selling is 100% pre-pandemic, and some of it might not be applicable in the ways that it used to be, especially when it comes to things like letting customers touch merchandise. While I am considering doing a video on how global events have impacted convention artists, and let me know if you're interested in that by the way. Uh, the tips in this video are exclusively based on the old normal. Uh, I would update them to be more new normal friendly, but I have not been to any conventions since the pandemic began, and I just don't feel comfortable giving advice based on what would really just be speculation on my part. There are going to be four parts to this rambling disaster of a verbal guidebook in a half-failed attempt to organize my thoughts and experiences into something that makes sense. Those sections are what to sell, pricing, display and promotion, and miscellaneous. Let's start with what to sell. First of all, what's most important is obviously that you make and sell what you enjoy and what you want to. No one can tell you what to create and the actual content of what you're selling is definitely not what this section is referring to. The first thing I will discuss though is the age-old question that I'm sure literally everyone has at least 40 opinions on, which is whether to sell fan art or original art. Because this can be a pretty controversial topic within the art community, I'm not going to argue about the morality of fan art or original art being more respectable or any of the other varying opinions on these issues, but rather just stick to the financial and legal side of things. In my experience, fan art does sell better than original art, and it's also a very helpful way to draw people into your art style and your table with something that they enjoy and recognize. That is not to say that original art doesn't sell at all, or that my experience applies to everyone, because that's obviously not the case, and everyone has a different experience with this particular dilemma, but as far as my own sales have gone, I've had the most success with about a 50-50 split between fan art and original art, with more fan art actually displayed on the table itself, and more original art displayed in my portfolio. Regarding the legality and policies surrounding the sale of fan art, there are two main things to keep in mind. The convention's policies and the copyright holder's policies. Convention policies are usually really easy to find out. They'll be in your Artist Alley contract, and most conventions have a representative you can talk to directly if you have more specific questions. Conventions reserve the right to refuse you your table if you don't abide by their policies, even if you've paid for it and shown up, so it's really important to make sure that you know their individual rules regarding fan art. A lot of events will have a list of fandoms that they will or will not allow fan art for, others disallow it altogether, and others will give you a guideline of, for example, 60% um, fan art and 40% original art. As far as the copyright holders policies go though, that's a lot more complicated. It's usually pretty hard to find out where big creators and companies stand as far as the sale of fan art is concerned, but it's always best to do as much research on that beforehand as possible. If you can't find a company or creator's rules about it online, I would recommend doing your best to get through to a representative of theirs and actually asking what they do and do not allow. Oftentimes they'll have different rules for conventions than for online sale, so you should mention that you're only planning on selling it at an in-person event, but assuming that's the case. Uh, if you absolutely can't reach anyone and find out what their policies are, it's best to either stay away from selling fan art from that fandom, or if you're dead set on it, asking other artists that you may know what their experiences are with that fandom, and if they've encountered any problems selling merch from it. For my very first convention, I uh, prepared a lot of Ruby fan art to sell, like I think six prints, and at that point I only had maybe ten prints because it was my first con. And only about two weeks before the convention did I look up policies and realize that Ruby fan art can't be sold, so don't be like me. Next on the topic of what to sell is the actual items themselves. 
What you'll see most at conventions are prints or posters, pins, stickers, charms, apparel, jewelry, and crafted items. I have minimal experience with crafted items other than my brief venture into Pokeball dioramas, so I'll be talking more about the digital art-based merchandise. Personally, I usually sell prints, mini prints, pins, and on-the-spot commissions, although I've also sold jewelry and will be getting more into apparel in the future as well. But regardless of what form you're selling your art in, there's one practice that's successful no matter what type of creation you're making, and that's to make sure that you have three main categories. Small, cheaper items that are best for impulse buyers, mid-ranged items that can appeal to anyone, and big-ticket items for people who either really like your work or really like the fandom that it's based on. No matter what you're selling, having a big range of differently priced items is the best way to appeal to every type of audience that's likely to stop by your table. Regarding on-the-spot commissions at conventions, that's another point I'd like to get into a little bit. On-the-spot commissions are kind of hit or miss as an experience for most people, and that's because the pros and cons are pretty divisive. The biggest pro to selling on-the-spot commissions is that you sort of become a commodity, if that makes sense. For the most part, a lot of artists don't do on-the-spot commissions, which takes you from a larger, oversaturated pool of artists all selling pre-made goods, and puts you into a smaller selection of artists to choose from that do take commissions for custom content. There's a higher demand and there are less people to fulfill it, which means that if you offer these commissions, you're pretty much guaranteed to get them in my experience. And that is honestly the only pro that I have found with on-the-spot commissions. But because that can make up some significant income, it's enough for me to ignore the cons. But trust me, the cons are really hard to ignore sometimes. To start, the people who will commission you aren't the same types of people who would commission you online. They tend to be way more casual, because buying from a table at a convention is a more casual experience and less experienced with working with artists, which leads to one primary issue, and that's that they're willing to pay less. Obviously, this doesn't apply to every customer, but for the most part, they are looking at your prints and thinking, okay, so they're charging that much for a print, they'll charge something similar for a commission, despite the fact that prints are cheaper because they're pre-made and mass-produced versus a custom piece that takes a significant amount of time and resources to do. And because convention artists are largely forced to match their prices to the average, which is a whole other issue I'll talk about another time, almost everyone reduces their prices to cater to this. It's a really tough problem to change or fix, because low on-the-spot commission prices have kind of become the standard. Because of that, you're making less, and you're forced to finish it in less time, because people want these commissions before the convention is over, sometimes before the day is over. Uh, I find that it's easiest for me to accept three to five commission slots on the first two days of the convention, and none on the third, because for the first two days you have the option to take their commission back with you after Artist Alley closes, and work on it in the evening. But if you're swamped on the third day and still trying to finish commissions, it's riskier to accept them and know that you really have no leeway at all when it comes to the deadline. On that note, it's important to keep in mind that while you'll be there for the whole weekend, there are a lot of attendees that won't. So make sure that you confirm with each customer that they would be okay with picking up their commission the next day if need be, or if it needs to be done that day. Ultimately, whether or not on-the-spot commissions are worth it is super dependent on the artist, how quickly they draw, what they're willing to charge, and how comfortable they are with time restraints. Next section is pricing, and because that's also very dependent on your own preferences, I won't spend a lot of time on this one. The best advice I can give here is to determine the cost per item of everything that you're selling, determine what merchandise like yours is going for at conventions, and then price it as closely to that as you're comfortable with so long as that still makes you a decent profit. It can be tempting to go with significantly lower prices than other artists, either due to lack of confidence or to make more sales rather than bigger sales. And while that's not an objectively bad idea, it's kind of a dick move to the other artists. Because so much about convention selling is based on the average price everyone is willing to pay for a certain type of thing, and so many people are selling that particular type of thing, it's just kind of scummy to say, hey, to set myself apart from all these other people selling similar things, I'll sell it for half the price. There are other ways to make yourself stand out, and you would not only be devaluing your work, but you'd be negatively impacting the artist alley economy for everyone else. It's one thing to price competitively, like making really tempting buy one get one deals, or going a few bucks under. It's another thing entirely to price your stuff so low that you're effectively stealing sales from others and devaluing their work as well. The last things on this topic are discounts and freebies. I find it really helpful to offer a small discount, like 15 or 20% off or buy one get one free, to people who may follow you online and drop by your table. Like I'll advertise a code on my social media, personally I use unicorn butts, but that's a long story, uh, and let people know that it'll get them a certain discount if they stop by and say it. 
Not only is it deeply entertaining to see grown ass adults come up to you and say unicorn butts, but it motivates people that follow either you or the convention's hashtag to actively seek out your table. It's also pretty common for people to offer discounts on the last day of the convention. As far as freebies go, I know there are a lot of opinions about them, and trust me, I have a lot of my own, but I have found that a fun thing to do is to give someone cosplaying a character that you have merch of one of your smaller, cheaper items. Personally, I really enjoy giving out pins of the characters they're cosplaying. Pins have about a 10 cent production cost for me, and not only does it encourage them to check out more of your work, but it just tends to make people happy and brighten their day. And it's, it's nice. To be clear, I mean if the person is already at your table and you notice them cosplaying a character, not seeing them halfway down the row of tables and yelling at them to come over, which you should probably not do. The next section is display and promotion, and by far the biggest priority here is having an organized, clean table where your merch is displayed visibly and nicely, and your name or business name is as clear as possible. Assuming you have a brand with a cohesive and concrete look, it's important that your table reflects that. A banner and color scheme are the most important aspects of this, but it also applies to smaller things, like the way you display your merchandise and the decorations used at your table. Making sure the look of your table is coordinated, on-brand, and unique is a really important way to connect your work to you as a person and a business, and make people recognize it both in the future and for the duration of the convention. Also on that, having business cards placed very visibly, plentifully, and excessively is really important. It can also be super helpful to practice your setup at home beforehand, partially so that you know exactly how you want it set up in order to save time and hassle on the day of the convention, but also so that you can visualize exactly how you want things to be organized in order to keep everything visible, but also aesthetically pleasing. On a side note, always be sure to bring your own tablecloth. Uh, some conventions provide them, but some don't, and if the color of the tablecloth doesn't match the look that you're going for, that's not ideal either. Promotion-wise, something I find a lot of success with is promoting new work that you'll be selling at the convention beforehand with the convention's hashtag and letting people know that it'll be for sale there. You'll be marketing it directly to the audience that you'll be selling it to. And I actually had a surprising amount of people at the last convention I was at come to my table and buy my newest print specifically because they saw it on Twitter first and knew it would be there. Once you're at the convention, this method is still effective in different ways. Instead of advertising new work for the convention, just post photos of your table and the stock that you want to highlight, and tag it with that convention's hashtag to encourage people to drop by. Okay, finally we've reached the miscellaneous section, which could be more accurately called the clusterfuck of unorganized thoughts that I wanted to include but couldn't categorize. So just a bunch of general tips that I'll be quickly summarizing. First, always greet people who stop by your table. You don't need to, and in my opinion, probably shouldn't start a full-on conversation with everyone who stops by, but it is really important to establish a brief but friendly connection with potential customers while also not overwhelming them. If you're accepting commissions, make sure you know exactly what information you'll need from customers, how you're going to communicate with them, how long each commission is estimated to take, and how many commissions you're willing to take per day. It can be really handy to have a printed form for this, but it's also easy and cheap to pick up a small receipt book from the dollar store and fill it out. That way both you and the customer have a copy of the important information. You should also have commission examples readily available specifically in the medium that you're offering. So if you're selling digital art but you're offering traditional commissions, you should try to have at least one traditional example with you to show anyone interested in ordering one. Next, regarding your products themselves, you should always try to offer bags for them when possible, even if it's just a plastic sleeve for a print or one of those little dollar store baggies for buttons or pins. It's still protecting the item, and it makes including a business card with each purchase easier, which you should also do if you have enough of them, because a lot of people forget the artists that they bought something from after the convention and won't be able to follow you online even if they wanted to. Uh, when displaying small items like pins and charms, people do tend to like to touch things or see them up close, but be careful with how you display them so that if you do let them touch them, you can readily see each person that interacts with them so that you can avoid theft. It's also helpful to have a portfolio of the prints that you're selling on the table for the same reason, because it allows people to tangibly connect with the prints and see them with more detail. Also, if possible, you should be recording all of your sales, either digitally or in a notebook or something, because you can absolutely just compare your Cashbox's contents at the beginning of each day to the end of each day, but it's really helpful to know later on what's selling the most, and it'll also save you time when doing inventory. Finally, when it comes to transporting table contents to and from your hotel room after Artist Alley closes each day, everyone has their own preference about what they are and aren't comfortable leaving at the table overnight. It's really up to you. The only thing that you absolutely should never leave at the table overnight is your cash box. 
And on that note, if you can, you should try to disguise it while you're transporting it to and from where you're staying. Especially if you're taking a bunch of stuff back with you and you might not notice it missing amongst all the rest. Even if you're just shoving it in an adequately large bag, it's obviously for the best that people don't know that you're carrying a box of money around. And that about wraps it up. I could go on forever about this, but I don't want the video to get too long. As I mentioned, I'll be talking more about convention advice both as an artist and as a customer in my next two videos, so please check those out if this is a topic that you want to hear about. If it's not a topic you want to hear about, check out my Twitter, because you can vote there for what you want to hear me discuss and you don't have to hear about all this stuff. I mean, you're still gonna have to hear about it, but there will be more and you'll like it better. So thank you guys for watching, and please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you enjoyed it. Stay safe, guys. Okay, quick note here at the end while editing. I'm sorry I talked so fast in this video. I was trying to make it not take too long. And it, you could argue, I mean, if you don't want it to take too long, don't add a little note at the end and just talk at a normal speed. But I, it, don't talk to me. I'll be in my corner.